Everybody, it's Tyler here at the World Championships. Check in with 4131 Iron Patriots coming out of the PNW. Now finalists from Kiri, an absolutely phenomenal run all the way through. Take a look at what 4131 has to offer on their robot. I love the overall elegance that this robot brings. A great intake, we'll be talking about some of the design process and iterations all the way into their arm. Doing something cool with Sword Drive, and we'll be talking about some of the different cool stuff they're doing with programming as well. Let's learn more about 4131 and their great run here at the World Championships coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first base camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Bach, as we start to go into your robot here, talk to me about your uh, intake, what it's been comprised of. I'd love to hear a little bit more about the design process and strategy that's gone into it too. So starting off, simplicity. That was our key thing. That's what we strive for. Another thing was modularity. Starting off with simplicity, you'll notice the rubber bands right here and the tensioning right there, that is what actuates this intake in and out and makes sure we can pick up cones and cubes at the same time. So. Another thing with that, modularity. Two bolts right here can take off the entire intake along with some wiring and we can replace it with the spares that we bring to competition. And it's been a help and it's been amazing to just have that modularity available between matches where if something breaks, something goes wrong, we can swap the entire thing within three minutes. I gotta ask you about the rubber band on here. I don't know if I've seen a, a rubber band for some of this. How often are you replacing that? Or is it like just in every match thing that you do? Honestly, we've had to replace that maybe twice or three times the entire oh, wow. season. So it's, it's been lasting, and we replaced it at the start of this competition, and we've gone through it with it, so it's, it hasn't been an issue. As we see kind of a, a little bit of this kind of opening and stuff, as we go through, i got to ask you on your team, when you were looking at analyzing the game, you know, we see all different widths of, like, intakes and claws, that sort of thing. When you were uh, creating this intake for you, uh, talk to me more about why this was the uh, right choice for your team. Yeah. So this was the right choice for our team because we have another thing with this intake, this little wrist thing that's going to spin and it makes sure that we can score on front and back and it can pick up a cone and a cube with the same intake and we are able to just keep it in and keep it secure while we're driving at max speed going over the charge station and stuff like that and again really emphasizing the simplicity that we have with this intake. And you, from a match strategy standpoint, are you typically going to the loading stations? I'm assuming you do have floor pickup as well too, but where do you go typically in a match? Typically we're able to go to the double substation and the, we have the ability to go to any spot and pick up from tip cones to standing cones to cubes around the back to single substation. We have the ability to do it all and that's been a really key thing to help uh, it, help our cycle times. Absolutely. Carson, talk to me more about as we go in. We mentioned the wrist a little bit too, but I'd love to hear more about uh, this arm process as we go through. And then you're doing something a little bit different with Swerve. I'd love to hear more about that. Sure, yeah. The, uh, the kinematics of our arm were something we debated for about two weeks at the start of the season. We knew we wanted some sort of pivot. That was critical. And then we also knew we needed some sort of elevator. Sure. And so the whole de debate was whether we wanted a, uh, a telescoping mechanism with an arm on it or an arm with a telescoping mechanism. And ultimately, we decided on a uh, arm with a telescoping mechanism as it simplified uh, just a couple of things, especially like with our wiring. Um, so our telescope is just a single stage telescope. Uh, we designed it in only a couple of weeks and um, it goes out about two feet and then can retract. And it fits entirely within our frame perimeter uh, using a um, like a prop so it holds it up and it stays within frame perimeter by about a quarter of an inch. Can we see a, a full extension on this and what I want to ask you in regards to it is like when you're looking at uh, center of gravity and trying to keep yourself balanced how did that come into consideration on this? Center of gravity was a big thing we did. Um, you can see on the arm there's some C channel and we manually milled lightning patterns into it to try and reduce the uh, amount of weight our arm had and then we you can see it's a relatively thin arm. We use a single piece of two by one rather than two parallel pieces as we uh, originally planned. And while the arm is still relatively heavy, um, we haven't had any t issues with tipping the robot. 
I mean, just watching this as it goes, you can tell it's very well balanced uh, yes. on this as well, too. So, uh, yeah, great design for that overall. As we go and talk to me a little bit about your Swerve and what you're doing uh, that's a little bit different for teams. Sure. The Swerve Drive, um, we came up with a new design, something we hadn't seen anywhere done before and we haven't done ourselves. We orient our swerves at about a 90 degree angle from where they're normally oriented. And because we only have the uh, Mark III, or the, yes, Mark III swerve drives, um, they don't have the wheels very close to the edge uh, in their base configuration compared to later versions like the Mark IV-I. Um, and so what we did, seeing as charge station was a big part of the game this year, we wanted to put our wheels as close to the edge of the robot as possible so we can get on as easy as possible. And so by orienting our uh, swerve drives offset a couple of degrees, it allows us to have an inch closer uh, between our bumpers and our wheels, and we can easily go over the charge station from the side of our robot. I love the whole thought process that's gone into it. We talked a lot about mechanical, but we got to talk about some programming as well, too. So June, talk to me about what's gone into the robot. I know you're doing something cool with your uh, macro pad uh, as well. So talk to me about, all about programming and uh, what you're uh, implementing here on your robot. All right, so from a software standpoint, I feel like all of the automation and driver aids that we're providing are really just removing that sort of complexity that comes with maneuvering a robot with multiple parts. Uh, so if you look over at our driver station, we actually have this product from Adafruit uh, that we programmed to actually work as an HID device in the driver station. And so using this device, uh, we call it the macro pad, we are able to select the specific grid and know that we're going to be scoring in. And so by selecting this grid using the macro pad, we can actually just use any April tag or location of scoring that we want to instead of just using the closest April tag nearby. Uh, and so using the, the, the data determined by the macro pad, we localize using the limelight and use our preset arm positions in order to score like pretty automatically. And I really do think that all of our, um, all of our work that has been put in has been towards just providing as much driver aid as possible. So something cool that we're also doing is utilizing the triggers on the controller as much as possible. So using half presses and whole presses, we're able to control whether the claw is intaking or not, or whether we're going to be extending or not, and just controlling the arm and not the telescope. And so really we're trying to give our drivers as much fine control over things as possible without making them too complex. Well, 41-31, a phenomenal season. Congratulations. We mentioned finalists on Curie looking great. So, of course, we can't wait to see what you do in future years as well, but congratulations on a great season, and uh, thanks for taking the time. We appreciate it. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.